Exotic Catalysts are a fascinating concept and are the pinnacle of endgame content which serve as an extra way players are able to take their favorite exotic to the next level. As of the making of this video, 90 Catalysts exist and today, I'm going to be ranking every single exotic Catalyst based on how much better they make the exotic in question. To start us off, here's a couple ground rules. 1. There are no bad catalysts. By their very nature, they are only capable of making a gun better, not worse, so any rankings will be based on how much better the catalyst makes the gun compared to its contemporaries, and how much better it makes the gun itself. For example, catalyst either makes a gun a little better or a lot better in this regard. 2. I will not be discussing catalyst method of acquiring or how easy it is to unlock once acquired as an indicator of usefulness. Most catalysts are acquired randomly or at the request unlocks and given enough play time you will get them all. Same goes with leveling. Despite how annoying some catalysts are to unlock once acquired, you can get them done with enough time and effort. 3. I will be discussing a catalyst level of usefulness as it applies to the entire game. I will not be splitting catalysts based on how good they are in any specific game mode. For example, Whisper the Worm catalyst would be garbage and crucible but broke and in raids as a measure of how much more useful it makes the gun during regular gameplay. 4. I will be examining an exotic's performance before and after getting the catalyst to measure how much better it feels in game. I'm not talking about an exotic weapon's overall level of usefulness in the meta as it stands currently. The best weapon in the game can have an effectively useless catalyst as far as I'm concerned. Don't be offended if your favorite gun ends up near the bottom, I'm just talking about the catalyst here. 5. To make things easier, the list is going to be in alphabetical order. All timestamps are going to be in the description for your convenience. When ranking, I will be placing guns into a tier list ranging from S to D, where S is the most game-changing and noticeable, and D being negligible to the function of the exotic, or the stat boosts are so minor that it hardly matters whether or not you have acquired or upgraded the catalyst. Finally, if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings, please let me know in the comment section below. Sit back and enjoy the video. Starting off with Ace of Spades, its catalyst Funeral Pyre causes Firefly to deal more damage while Memento Mori is active. TLDR, you get a better Firefly that isn't the best in the game, B tier catalyst. Aegir Scepter is the first example of an exotic whose catalyst makes the gun infinitely more usable. The gun itself is okay, but the catalyst fundamentally changes the way the gun is usable in all content. For those of you who are not already aware, Aegir Scepter without the catalyst is not capable of the hold reload to activate a mega laser beam at the cost of your super. This is only possible once the catalyst is inserted and completed in the gun. You can argue how useful the laser is itself to the usability of Aegir Scepter since you have to sacrifice your super to use it in the first place, but because of the playstyle changing nature of the catalyst this is going to make our first A tier catalyst. It makes it way more usable, however it is not mandatory to make the weapon top tier. Arbalus has seen better days. For starters, inserting the catalyst will provide Arbalus plus 1 to magazine size and provide a minor plus 20 boost to handling to allow for slightly faster shot swapping and hip fire usability, though you shouldn't be hip firing this thing in the first place. The magazine increase is well worth it since that extra shot is often make or break when dealing with endgame champions and bosses. The catalyst also grants Arbalist Genesis rounds, allowing for the magazine to refill upon breaking an enemy shield. This is significant since Arbalus only reason for existing is to be a shield breaker and keeping up this level of firepower is almost impossible without the catalyst. Ranking this catalyst makes it S tier. The plus one mag is arguably more useful than the Genesis rounds and the handling is very nice. It does a little bit of everything and makes the Arbalist significantly better. I would question anyone who uses Arbalist and hasn't found the time to grind the catalyst. Bad Juju's catalyst is very simple with the text reading, quote, extends the duration of string of curses. That's it. Very simple. To measure whether or not this makes or breaks the exotic, we need to know by how much it extends the strings of curses. Without the catalyst, strings of curses last approximately 3.5 seconds. With the catalyst, a string of curses lasts approximately 4.5 seconds. For all intents and purposes, this makes string of curses approximately 28% better with the catalyst, but that just makes string of curses slightly more effective. So, if you value string of curses being one second longer than this catalyst, is great. However, when comparing it to other catalysts, it's underwhelming, making it me rank in the middle of the pack. B tier. Black Talon's catalyst reads as follows. Shots blocked immediately after guarding to increases the damage of Crow's Wings for a very short duration. Crow's Wings is the heavy attack that would fire a void projectile unique to the Black Talon. To make use of this catalyst, one must block damage immediately after guarding. When I say immediately, I mean almost instantly. There is less than half a second window to even trigger reversal, but if you can't trigger it, you're rewarded with a 50% damage buff on the next attack 
that is critical damage. Yellow text, the same heavy attack that you drained your sword energy to activate guarding in the first place. This is extraordinarily finicky to active, and in the time you take to set up reversal, you can just combo multiple light and heavy attacks to just deal more damage overall. Because of this, Black Talon is going to be the first catalyst to occupy D tier. This catalyst serves no purpose, since even if you have it, unlocked it, the odds you're going to use it are so small that you're often going to forget that it even exists. Borealis Catalyst increases reload speed by 20. I have no other words to say. This is so insignificant that I cannot even comprehend the difference watching the reload speed during normal gameplay. Borealis Catalyst is the perfect example of what makes a gun catalyst bottom tier. A bonus so insignificant that it means essentially nothing for the function of the weapon. It's just not noticeable, meaning Borealis is going to be the second to occupy D tier. One of the newest catalysts on this list, Buried Bloodline grants the perk Split Vian Lineage makes it so that when Devour is active, you apply Weaken on hit. The gun relies on Lifesteal and Devour being active, so the Catalyst is just an extra goodie bag and the complements the exotic perfectly, but it doesn't do anything to set it apart from the rest, making it to be a B-tier Catalyst. Weaken is a good status effect, and being able to apply it whenever you have Devour active is good, but it's not going to be game-changing. To talk about an actual game-changing catalyst, Cerberus Plus One Catalyst adds one additional firing mode to this fan-favorite gun. This Plus One is very fun, swapping from a fast-firing hectic spread to a more reliable, slow-firing close-range spread. Its main function is to change the way the exotic is used, making it very noticeable. It certainly makes the gun feel better and play better, since Cerberus Plus One is weird in that you deal more damage the further away you are from a target, so at close range, using the fast firing fire mode you are at a severe disadvantage but by the catalyst allowing you to hold reload and change your firing mode you can use this gun admittedly the gun still isn't very good but the catalyst makes it much much better meaning i'm gonna rank it e a tier since it's a very noticeable change to a gun however it's not going to be as effective compared to how much better other catalysts make their guns centrifuge is a very simple catalyst when amplified this weapon gradually gains overcharge the rate of gain for overcharge charge is slightly slower than running or shooting the gun, but it stacks with both of these methods. The big draw behind completing this catalyst is that you cannot lose overcharge while amplified unless you reload. Normally, if you stand still and aren't shooting, your overcharge is going to fall off, but while amplified, it keeps on ticking up and up and up, and if overcharge is stacking, you cannot lose stacks. It solves one of the issues of this gun. However, I'm also going to be ranking this catalyst in B tier. It's not very noticeable in how it affects a gun's performance in game, and it only solves one of the issues with the gun. It makes its downside a little more bearable rather than leveling the gun up, and because of that, this isn't an elite catalyst. It's just a bonus. Cold Heart follows the trend of most other year one exotics. Its catalyst gives a minor stat boost and no other effects. In this case, 30 points of stability, 20 points of reload speed, and most importantly, it changes the recoil direction from 90 to 100. To put it simply, for those who don't know how recoil direction works in this game, take a look at this chart here. It's fairly self-explanatory. At 90 recoil, Cold Heart pearls slightly up and to the left. With 100 recoil, it pulls straight up for the most part. This makes the gun feel much better with much more controllable recoil. Combined with the stability buff, it's just a far smoother and much easier experience without the catalyst. And because this gun's best use case scenario is hitting one target for the entire duration, the extra bit of recoil help and stability make Cold Heart's catalyst A tier. The Colony Catalyst provides the gun with plus one in the magazine and deeper pockets, which increases the gun's inventory size from 70 to 100. What this means is that you don't need to use any reserve mods to reach max inventory. Eight shots in the gun, 10 in reserve for 18 total. Void reserves have no effect on this weapon once the Catalyst is inserted. All this Catalyst does is increase ammo capacity and makes ammo economy better. Since you don't have to dedicate chest slots to reserves, I'm still going to rank it in C tier since that one extra ammo in the magazine and slightly increased reserve are barely noticeable effect and have no real impact on making the quality better, however it still does have a use. Crimson is yet another catalyst that suffers from year 1 syndrome, plus 20 range, short, sweet, simple, right? 
Franck. However, range affects Crimson different than other hand cannons because Crimson is a three round burst hand cannon. It splits the stats between the bullets. Crimson is just a funky gun. The end result is barely noticeable and it belongs in the same category as Colony C tier. It does a tiny bit to help, but if you really want to measure it, you still could measure it that extra 0.4 to 0.6 meters. Darcy is dangerously disappointing. Discussing this catalyst feels disingenuous since it suffers from year one catalyst syndrome and adds 20 stability. If you're playing correct, you will not notice this. If you're playing wrong, you still won't notice it. It's just a useless catalyst and it lands in D tier with its buddy Borealis. Dead Messenger Cattles grants no stats, however it grants a new perk that complements it perfectly. Turnabout grants the user an overshield when they break an enemy's shield. It's a great perk for a grenade launcher, especially a waveframe, but does it make the gun noticeably better? No. The overshield is negligible at best and removable at worse. At best, it doesn't even synergize with other overshield effects and it's overridden very easily. But because it still does something, it has to go into C tier. It doesn't do as much as B tier, but it does more than D tier. Side note, on the craftful version of Dead Messenger, you get to choose between Demolitionist, Unvolenting, and Thresh because this gun already had a predetermined catalyst before it was craftable. That's why I cannot consider these three perks to be catalysts, where some would. Deathbringer Catalyst increases how quickly Dark Descent reaches its full potential. Contrary to popular belief, the main projectile does not count towards distant quote-unquote fell. Only distance traveled by the Seeker projectiles influences the damage multiplier. Also, you do not need to shoot this weapon directly in the air to get maximum value, you just need to make sure that the orbs are traveling, since despite saying orbs need to fall, the orbs only track total distance traveled, not a change or in horizontal or vertical velocity. But does this catalyst improve the gun? Yes, it's quite shocking how much faster, thus how much more damage this gun is capable of dealing in closed spaces, since its biggest weakness before was dealing with enclosed spaces, where the orbs couldn't travel very far, but now that's not really an issue. Because of this, Deathbringer Catalyst is easy A tier, since it makes the gun far better with it than without it. Delicate Tomb might as well not even have a catalyst. It reads, quote, collecting an ionic trace partially reload this gun from reserves. There are no stat bonuses from this catalyst. It just gives a little bit more time before reload, but considering the reload time for this gun is already very low, you don't see much practical use considering what collecting an ionic trace already does for this gun. It's just an added layer of utility that most players will see, sometimes not see. It still does something because of that it must go in C tier. Dragon's Breath Catalyst regens rocket fuel faster. It also adds the chance to generate fire sprites when killing an enemy. The increase in regen goes from approximately 27 seconds to 15 seconds, an almost 50% increase in regen of rocket fuel passively. But if you're using this thing correctly, rocket fuel is hardly an issue. Same goes with fire sprites. You generate enough of being on solar and using solar weapons that it is almost insignificant. However, due to the passive regen nature of this catalyst, I must put this in B tier because it it does have a noticeable effect on gameplay, it just isn't as good as you would expect it to be. I love Duality's Catalyst. It does enough to make the gun far more usable. It is a pure stat-based catalyst. It increases the range by 20 points and also increases the magazine size by 2. The mag change is nice, but the exotic has a built-in reload speed buff. The real selling point to this catalyst is the range increase. Practically speaking, this is going to give you between an extra 1 and 2 meters of one-shot kill potential in Crucible and allow you to kill enemies from further in every other activity. It makes the slug component of duality comparable to Chaperone, the best slug shotgun in the game, and it makes the pellet portion comparable to any aggressive frame shotgun. Duality Catalyst, despite being a simple stat change, makes the gun far more usable and is one of the best examples of how to make a stat beast catalyst extraordinarily worth it. Duality Catalyst is an easy S tier, considering that this catalyst makes the gun far better and is one of the most noticeable stat changes given to a gun through catalysts. Back to back bangers, Ariana's Val Catalyst reads as follows, increases magazine size, holstering this weapon automatically reloads it after a short period of time. For the actual numbers and effects, this increases the magazine size from 6 to 9 and gives Ariana's Val the perk auto loading holster. This catalyst perfectly complements the playstyle associated with Ariana's, that being use it real quick to take advantage of the bonus damage and then put it away and have it reload itself. Auto reloading plus the mag size solves every Every issue of the small magazine and the slow reload speed. If you are using it as a shot swapping monster that it's supposed to be, you're doing this correctly with the catalyst. Second time in a row, the Ariana's Val catalyst is going to be going into S tier. 
X Deer's Catalyst is one of those that might as well not even exist. Quote, weapon and rage is faster while amplified. Final blows with this weapon make you amplified. X Deer's already reaches 100% in rage very quick in one to two shots on most enemy types. This only is going to be useful when taking damage. In my testing, I found the difference to getting max in rage with and without the Catalyst to be irrelevant. Same with final blows make you amplified. If you've run this gun on arc like it's designed to be, you shouldn't have any issues getting amplified so it doesn't solve any issue besides becoming amplified on non-arc subclasses. The only reason this catalyst is going to be going into C tier and not D is because the final blows grant amplification, which has some use on non-arc subclasses. Fighting Lion Catalyst increases reload by 30 and has the effect after this weapon fires equipped kinetic and power weapons get a brief period of improved handling and accuracy. The handling boost is very noticeable, allowing for much faster hot swapping and GL combos for easy one shots. The accuracy bonus isn't something I noticed personally being a mouse and keyboard player and I really couldn't feel any difference when plugging in the controller to try. The reload speed buff translates to an effective base reload speed dropping from 3.49 seconds to 2.85 seconds. Still kind of a slow reload, but it does help out a lot. Fighting Lion is a year one exotic with a good catalyst, something rare. This earns itself a spot in A tier since it makes the exotic better, but it doesn't provide as much utility to the guns as in S tier. Forerunner gives you grenade, nothing else. Get a kill, and then for roughly 3 seconds after, you can hold reload to get a single use grenade that behaves identically to a halo frag grenade. The best part about this catalyst is that it allows you to get a free grenade. This catalyst is only as useful as the grenade is. Because of this, I'm going to have to rank it B tier. It does something, but not to the level of anything above it. Fourth Horseman's Catalyst dramatically improves every facet of this gun. Plus one to the magazine and plus 40 to it synergizes perfectly with its exotic perk, allowing for each consecutive shot to deal more damage at the price of an increased spread. This is another prime example of a catalyst handcrafted to perfectly suit an exotic's design style of play. And this allows for the fourth horseman to crack into the top tier damage with this catalyst because of how mandatory this catalyst is to being able to use this gun effectively i'm going to have to rank it in s tier if you're using this gun without the catalyst you are simply doing something wrong Gallowhorn Catalyst reads as follows, increases magazine size, final blows with wolf pack rounds spawn a faster, more powerful missile at the target's location. The mag increase goes from 1 to 2, and the increased damage from the missile spawn is enough to make Gallowhorn usable as a mainstay DPS option. Without Catalyst, this gun is usable only as a support weapon, giving wolf pack rounds, but with the Catalyst, this gun levels up to one of the best heavy weapons in the entire game, one of the easiest S tiers I'm going to give all day. Just like 4th Horseman, this Catalyst was designed from the ground up to make full use of the exotic's purpose and turns it up to 11. Graviton Lance and its Catalyst have been reworked a number of times. As it currently stands, Graviton Lance Catalyst has three functions. The first function is plus 20 range, useful on a pulse rifle, however Graviton Lance has no damage fall off due to its exotic perk, so it only applies to the first bullet in the volley. Second, the Catalyst grants Vorpal Weapon. Vorpal Weapon is one of my favorite perks in the entire game for primary exotics, allowing more damage to bosses and yellow bar enemies, plus more damage to guardians and their supers, allowing this thing to absolutely tear. Finally, and least consequentially, the Catalyst grants Turnabout for a small number of overshield when breaking shields or killing enemy guardians in their super. To be honest, this Catalyst does a lot, but the only real useful portion is Vorpal Weapon. The range and Turnabout are nice little bonuses, but are almost unnotable. If Vorpal Weapon wasn't on this gun, I would rank it in C tier, but the inclusion of Vorpal alone makes me rank Graviton in B tier. Grand Overture is next, and its Catalyst grants plus 20 handling, plus 10 stability, and adds the function. Missile explosions from the alternate fire mode will cause arc blind to occur. The enemies defeated by the missile will explode into an arc burst. It's a middle of the road catalyst at best, the blind is useful, but it requires you to waste the missile volley either all your shots or none of them, and since the missile volley is best safe for bosses and majors, you don't often see the blind or explosions. Still, it does itself enough to earn a spot into B tier since the arc blind itself is amazing utility. Hard Light's Catalyst increases stability to max. Use this weapon before and after and you will see no difference since this gun already has no visual recoil, it doesn't make it any easier to control since it is almost already perfectly stable. This is a borderline useless catalyst that suffers from year 1 catalyst design syndrome and earns itself a spot with its other element shifting brother Borealis in D tier.
Hawkmoon's Catalyst increases magazine size and grants a stacking bonus to handling, reload speed, and weapon range based on number of stacks of paracausal charge. This Catalyst is a perfect synergy and rewards players for using the gun as intended more than it already does. It is a perfectly designed Catalyst. The only downside is that the bonus stats go away when you lose stacks by either reloading or expending the last round. Also, the plus one mag allows for paracausal shot to max out over its regular final shot damage multiplier. Easy A tier, there's no reason not to have done this catalyst unless you cannot get it, but the still gun is very usable without it. Since it relies upon getting precision hits, you can mess this one up at any time, it just makes the gun a little bit more forgiving with that one extra shot in the magazine. Heart Shadow Catalyst increases movement speed when invisible and increases the sword's capacity from 50 to 60. Short, sweet, simple. The bonus movement speed isn't oppressive and the bonus ammo is always welcome. Since the effects are limited but it doesn't do much to make the base weapon better besides complementing what it already does, it's just going to be B tier as a middle of the pack a catalyst. Air Apparent Catalyst increases the durability of the arc shield when spinning the barrel and partially reloads the weapon from reserves when the arc shield is broken. The increased shield capacity is around 50% greater and reloads 100 rounds from reserve when it is broken, also known as half the gun's magazine from reserves. The extra survivability is nice, same with the extra ammo when it's broken, but I struggle to see how this catalyst makes the gun more usable since by its very nature the increased shield stops ammo refill effect from activating, and it only activates once the gun is fully spun up and the shield is drained from full to zero. You have to tank full damage to get the most out of this. You can't tank half damage, you can't tank one damage, you need to tank an entire arc shield's worth of damage to get this thing to activate. This is going in C tier since both the traits counteract each other. We're ranking this mainly off of the increased shield capacity, which is a little bit nicer for survivability, so C tier. Hierarchy of Needs. Deploying the ring or striking a target with a seeking projectile improves draw speed and reload speed. This catalyst perfectly complements the exotic. However, the increased reload speed and draw time are not as much as you would think. It just doesn't turn it up the way you'd expect. The effect is almost as potent as Perfect Draw or Archer's Tempo is on other bows. Because of this, it's B tier. Even though it's a really well-designed catalyst, it still doesn't amp up the exotic's base level of usefulness. Huckleberry's Catalyst is very simple. Kills with this weapon reload the entire magazine. Short, sweet, simple. Normally, kills would only reload half the magazine, but this Catalyst just allows the gun to be much more effective. It's not oppressive, it's just a straight, unmissable upgrade. The gun at max rev fire so fast, sometimes you run out of ammo on that half reload, so it's more useful for killing red bars, but there are use case scenarios where this Catalyst makes this gun shred far more effectively. I'm going to put this into A tier, since even though it is incredibly well designed and is unmissable. It doesn't do as much as the catalyst in S tier to improve the usability of the weapon. On paper, Izanagi's Burden's Catalyst is crazy good, increasing the damage bonus of Honed Age when all four rounds are consumed. However, looking at the actual damage buff when four bullets are consumed, it's only an extra 20% on top, with versus without the Catalyst. Not to mention, the damage buff only works when four bullets are consumed, so it has no effect on regular gameplay or when less than four bullets are consumed. This is a tough one to rank, since the extra damage is really, really nice when doing endgame raiding or taking down bosses, but it doesn't break it into S tier even though it is almost mandatory to have so I'm going to rank this into A tier. Jade Rabbit Catalyst does as follows, grants 30 stability to an already tremendously stable gun that has zen moment and has a 100 recoil pattern. Maybe this is supposed to be more useful on controller, but as a mouse and keyboard player I did not notice this one bit. Because of that I'm ranking it in D tier with the other year 1 stability granting catalyst. It's poorly designed and needs a rework if Jade Rabbit is to be even remotely usable in the future. Jotun Catalyst adds Incandescent and Corners. The former allows Jotun to apply more Scorch stacks onto opponents and have a larger solar explosion when getting one kill, and Cornered makes for an effective 15% increased charge time within 2 meters of any enemy for 2 seconds. Both are used for perks, both are noticeable and make the gun better, but not so good as to be mandatory for its use. You can be forgiven if you've missed this, but it's still really strong. A tier. Moving on to our last Black Armor Exotic, we're looking at Le Monarch. Plus 20 reload speed, plus 30 stability, and adds Unrelenting as a perk. The reload speed speeds up the bow's fire rate by proxy, and stability is pointless on bow. Unrelenting gets you out of some tough situations, especially considering the current bow meta in Crucible. Overall, it's a good catalyst. Unrelenting is a bit finicky in its activation, since you need to get final blows with it, and you're really only getting a faster reload speed by virtue of a quicker reload, so I'm going to be putting this one into B tier since the effects aren't the most noticeable. 
Legend of Acreus Catalyst is game changing for the gun. A plus 40 to the base reload stat, a 50% increase in spare ammo capacity, plus two in the magazine for six shots total, and Trench Barrel is added as the kicker. This is one of, if not the best exotic catalyst in the entire game, because without this, Acreus is simply unusable. With it, Acreus is one of the greatest close range boss shredders in the entire game. Thus, this catalyst deserves a spot into S tier. Back to back bangers. Next up, we have Leviathan's Breath. This one grants a maximum quiver size and in an increased archer's tempo, decreasing charge time after every precision hit on an enemy. This catalyst turns Leviathan's into one of the best damage options in the entire game, full stop. If there's a boss that needs killing, there's almost no better option currently than Leviathan's Breath because of this catalyst, allowing for the fastest draw time and fire rate possible. Easy S tier. Lord of Wolves Catalyst grants Fang and Claw, increases reload speed when released the wolves is active, and stability when it is not active. In my opinion, if these were swap values, this catalyst would turn Lord of Wolves into a nightmare again. However, because the stats it grants are underwhelming and it doesn't make or break, it is gonna have to go into C tier. It's just not a particularly good catalyst. Lorenz Driver Catalyst gives enhanced radar. Also, when you collect three telemetry from its exotic perk, you no longer need to get precision find the blows to activate the void implosion effect from EM Anomaly. This is a great catalyst. You could be forgiven for not noticing the enhanced radar, but by allowing any kill for 30 seconds while its exotic perk is active to not need to be precise in order for the implosion turns this thing into a monster. It's a strong effect, a strong catalyst. I'm going to be putting this into A tier since this doesn't make or break the weapon. It's good without it. It's just a little bit better with it. Luminous Catalyst grants two remnants for the price of one kill. It doubles the effect and allows for two heals slash buffs for the price of one. This is very good. It improves Illumina's support effectiveness, basically making it twice as good at doing its job because you get to worry less about getting kills to charge the noble rounds and more about buffing your team. This is an easy S tier. Malfeasance is an S tier catalyst. Before I even discuss what it does, let's discuss the role of Malfeasance. It is a primary workhorse exotic that specializes in dealing with tanky enemies quickly when you don't have any special or heavy ammo to deal with them. That being said, its catalyst grants plus 20 range and vorpal weapon. This perk on a primary allows for 20% extra damage to all mini bosses, bosses, as well as at guardians and their supers. Because of it, it's on a primary, like Graviton Alliance, it's the strongest vorpal weapon can be. However, unlike Graviton, Malfeasance is meant for dealing with these enemy types specifically, so I'm going to rank it into S tier. It can single handedly make Malfeasance useful as boss damage in all end game activities once you run out of ammo or hell, or even as a main damage option if you don't want to think too hard. The Manscore Catalyst grants the perk Flying Monster, which provides bonus damage resistance when airborne and getting kills. This is a catalyst that complements the gun's intended style of play, however, since the effects are minimal and the style of play is bad, I'm going to be putting this into C tier, because even though it does a job, that job is pointless because it is a flawed play style in the first place, and no catalyst can salvage it, especially when it's designed like this. Merciless Catalyst grants plus 40 range and stability, and is a good example of a year 1 catalyst because it benefits the gun. Since base Merciless has a low range and stability, this catalyst allows for the gun to be usable in endgame PvE's activity, and is currently mandatory for current solo flawless root of nightmare strategies. Because of how good the catalyst is in improving Merciless, I'm going to rank it in an A tier because it just grants stats and no other special perk, I can't move it up into S tier. Mida Catalyst grants no distractions, granting 35% flinch reduction after aiming for 0.9 seconds. Is it nice? Yes. Is it noticeable? Kinda. Does it make Mida more usable by virtue? Not really. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't belong in D tier because it is a fundamentally sound weapon and no distractions, it's just a little bit of extra. It doesn't do much to help, but it still works, so C tier. Monte Carlo has one of the most disappointing catalysts in the entire game. This thing was hyped for months just to be a flop. At 5 stats in Makarov chain, you get to use a single shot melee attack from the attached bayonet on Monte Carlo. This attack works only once and it grants melee energy. Yes, it deals good damage, but the danger you have to put yourself in to use it, it's just not worth it. Because this catalyst is the bayonet, I judge the catalyst to be C tier, but because it actually does something useful, it's why I'm going to have to rank it in C rather than D, even though I dislike very, very strongly what it could have been versus what it actually was. 
the Navigator Catalyst grants the alternate fire mode Gordian Knot. This added functionality allows for a strand anchor point to be placed and generated anywhere without having to consume a grapple need. This allows for some insane endgame strategies that are not possible without this gun. Despite being so painfully simple, this catalyst allows the gun to be at the top and thus the catalyst must be S tier. Necrochasm Catalyst adds Outlaw, a good perk on an underwhelming gun. However, it's complementary to its playstyle, I just don't see much use out of it, but it still actually does something, so I'm gonna have to rank it in the middle of the pack, B tier. No Time to Explain has a great catalyst. It makes the projectiles from Rewind again to fire more frequently. Overall, a good catalyst, no reason not to get it. It is a solid A tier because it dramatically improves the performance of the exotic perk, but not so much as to be an S tier option. Osteostrigus Catalyst makes poison final bullets for load ammo into the magazine. This is a good catalyst and allows for almost non-stop firing the gun if poison is triggered on enemy kills. Not to mention, it allows for good synergy with the Warlock Exotic Necrotic Grips. It's craftable and it's guaranteed to get, so there's literally no reason not to have this one. I'm going to rank it A tier since it just allows the weapon to be far better with it than without it, because of the ammo considerations and the spam heavy style of play allowed by having it. Outbreak Perfected's Catalyst increases nanite damage and whenever an enemy dies with nanites attached to them, not the final blow caused by the nanites, it will spawn additional seeking nanites from their corpse. I have been spamming A tier Catalyst and I have no reason not to continue this trend, this is a no brainer, it makes the exotic perk more effective and adds the extra functionality in the nanite explosions after death, A tier. Polaris Lance, in my mind, is currently the best endgame PvE weapon in the entire game. It's just a no-brainer. However, the Catalyst just adds Dragonfly. It's good, but Solar 3.0 already covers the Scorch Explosions and the Solar Damage effect better than Dragonfly does. It's just a little bit extra Scorch and a little bit extra damage on top of it. It works alongside Polaris Lance. You really won't see this too often, so I'm going to have to rank it into B tier. We all remember that one laser tag weekend where Prometheus Lens was actually broken, but Prometheus One's Catalyst adds 20 stability and 20 handling and incandescent. Very simple. The stats don't de really do much in this case since trace rifles are stable enough, as well as incandescent just stacks with the other solar effects on it already, but doesn't work as well as you think it does, so this is going to have to end up in C tier. Prospector Catalyst increases blast radius by 40 and maxes out ammo capacity so you don't need to use reserves. Great Catalyst, it perfectly complements the guns, nothing too crazy, easy A tier, just makes the gun far better in my opinion, even if Prospector isn't in the best place in the meta right now. Quicksilver Storm's Catalyst makes the gun fundamentally more broken. For starters, it's the only Catalyst in the entire game that changes primary damage type of the gun. Quicksilver Storm is normally comedic, but it changes to Strand once the Catalyst is in. This change alone allows for so many build possibilities. The kicker is, it also changes the grenades to make them to be able to generate tangles upon final blows with the grenades. This playstyle changing nature of Quicksilver combined with it actually being one of the best catalysts in the game make it an easy S tier and I would wager that this is the best catalyst in the entire game up through with Leviathan's Breath and Accurus in terms of its usability and overall mandatoriness you need to be able to use Quicksilver. Rat King Catalyst provides 20 aim assistance as well as changes the recoil direction to 100. See chart as to why this is good. Not only that, but it adds the functionality to refresh health every time the vermin perk is triggered. This just means you get an instant health boost whenever you reload after getting a kill as well as going invisible, but the invisible is built into the gun already. It's a shame Rat King isn't more usable, but it's a fundamentally solid catalyst that I'm going to rank into A tier. You can never go wrong with that little bit of extra health and those stats do work wonders. Revision Zero is one of those crafted exotics that technically has four catalysts, but instead of ranking them separately, I'm going to tell you what game gives you. In choice of Outlaw, four times the charm, a frenzy, and pressurized mag. Of these four, they all impact reload speed or ammo economy. In this case, I say Outlaw is the best, and I would rank it into B tier. If I was to rank the others, I'd put them into C tier. If you're using this gun, just use Outlaw. It's really the only thing that makes sense. Risk Runner Catalyst is a year one exotic with a good catalyst. Even though it only gives 30 range, it's still useful for the function of the weapon since the additional range is awesome on a submachine gun. I'm going to put it into B tier. Ruinous Effigy grants deconstruction, allowing for more damage to be dealt to the opponents weakened by the transmutation spears. It only allows for the increased damage to be dealt by the Ruinous Effigy, so you can't use it to weaken and then swap to something that does a little bit more damage, so it really impacts its usefulness. If the weaken allowed for more damage to be dealt with every gun instead of just Ruinous Effigy, it would be much better, but because of that, it's going to have to go into C tier. 
Skyburn's Oath is your one exotic that simply grants stats. If you already know how I feel about these, but in this case, the stats granted are plus 20 to reload speed. It takes your reload from 2.19 and brings it down to 1.84. This is basically unnoticeable. It's going into D tier. Sleeper Simulant Catalyst grants increased ammo reserves and allows it to shoot faster. The increase in charge time takes it from 1024 charge time to 774, which is very noticeable in game. It is a solid catalyst. You shouldn't be using Sleeper without it. It's a good year one catalyst that greatly improves the gun's functionality. It's going to be A tier. Sturm is a gun that's useful in two capacities, as a shot swapping monster and a pair to drag. That being said, with the hand cannon, it can only improve by increasing range and handling. Its catalyst does just that, plus 20 range, plus 40 handling. Besides stats, it does nothing else. It is a solid year one catalyst. B tier. Soros Regime's catalyst does two things. One, it increases the chance to regen health from Starless Legacy, and two is to change the recoil angle from 50 to 100. Once again, see my recoil chart. Soros is a slept on gun that, in my opinion, should see more use. However, in my opinion, despite the benefits of this catalyst, I'm still going to have to put it into C tier. The health regen increased chance is nice, but it's not consistent, and Soros is already buttery smooth without the recoil direction change, even though you can see an, an effect from it in game. Sunshot Catalyst grants plus 30 range plus 20 stability. It is a good year one catalyst, but the stability is pointless. The range is the only useful component of this, so it's only going to make it into C tier. Sweet Business Catalyst is one of those confusing ones because it does two things. One, it says it reduces flinch when at full spin, and the second thing it says that it doesn't do is grants one explosive round every five to seven shots. I don't like this catalyst and doesn't make Sweet Business any more useful. It is almost as useful as the Sweet Business is itself. I'm going to put it into D tier. The explosive rounds do not do anything to save this gun in my opinion. Symmetry Catalyst greatly improves the gun by increasing the number of stacks of dynamic charge from 15 to 20. This gun's all fire is as good as stacks of charge it has so allowing more to be kept makes this catalyst a B tier option, but it still isn't the greatest. Telesto's Catalyst increases the magazine size from 4 to 7 and increases reserve capacity by 40 points, almost maxing out reserve capacity. Good Catalyst, not overbearing, you can use it with it, you can use it without it, you're really only using this for the increased magazine size and because of that I'm going to put it into B tier. Thorn has a shiny brand new Catalyst and despite being nerfed within a month of release it's still one of the most broken Catalysts the game has to offer. It gives Storm literally every stat it needs. Base plus 15 range, plus 5 stability, plus 5 airborne effectiveness. It does this, plus it gives the new perk, Refined Soul, boosting Thorn's stat even further with more range, mobility, and handling. It's quite simply one of the best catalysts in the entire game, and is a easy S tier. Thunderlord Catalyst, when causing lightning strike, this weapon reloads partially from reserves. It's every casual's wet dream. This is the catalyst that allows Thunderlord to be mistaken for top DPS by blueberries. It effectively gives Thunderlord an infinite magazine. If Thunder hits something, which it almost always wills, as long as you aren't shooting the ground. The only thing keeping this catalyst out of S tier is that it doesn't provide any other stats or bonuses. Even if it gave a minor boost, it would be S tier, but because it only deals with the ammo in the gun and pulls from reserves, it doesn't generate ammo out of thin air, it's going to have to go into A tier. Tiku's Divination Catalyst says a lot of words. TLDR, if you detonate the hip-fired arrows, your next charge shot will deal more damage. This damage is not significant, but it's a consistent damage buff on an otherwise underwhelming weapon, B tier Catalyst. Tommy's Matchbook Catalyst allows for health regen while Ignition Trigger is active and for squirts to be applied through Ignition Trigger while shooting. This is an A tier Catalyst, it just makes the gun far better with it than without it, but it is not as good as the Catalyst already in S tier. Touch of Malice Catalyst grants rapid hit. It complements the gun perfectly since recoil gets a little crazy when chaining that last shot in the magazine so any increased stability is useful. Good Catalyst but not very strong compared to the others in A tier so it's going to be B tier for Touch of Malice. Fun fact, Tractor Cannon was the first catalyst I ever earned and completed. I did it during an escalation protocol on Mars in one session. Yes, I am that old. But the catalyst itself gives plus 3 to the magazine and plus 50 to inventory capacity. It's just an ammo capacity catalyst, but the Tractor Cannon isn't a gun that requires a lot of ammo to fulfill its function, and because of that, I'm going to be giving it C tier. Traveler's Chosen Catalyst chose to be bad by giving it a bad perk, a good perk, and plus 3 to the magazine capacity. The bad perk is surplus since it's contrary to the playstyle of this gun to have abilities fully charged, and the good perk is Osmosis, allowing damage type to change to the subclass whenever you throw your grenade. Combined, these three create a mid-catalyst, and because of that, it belongs in the B tier. 
Trinity Ghoul's Catalyst decreases draw time from 720 to 612 and grants the Forked Lightning perk. This Catalyst is the thing that allows for Trinity Ghoul to be one of the best workhorses the entire game. Easy S tier, since this Catalyst makes the gun usable by itself. Normally, to trigger the Lightning Strike on Trinity Ghoul, you need to get a kill with Trinity Ghoul or with the Lightning Strike. However, without it, any arc ability, any arc kill, anything arc related, as long as you have your bow out, is going to trigger the ability to spam lightning. This means you can just shoot at the ground and trigger lightning upon lightning and just be an absolute monster. Two Tail Fox Catalyst adds one extra rocket to the folly that deals arc damage and jolts targets. Personally, I would say this is my favorite catalyst in the game. It's so simple and sweet, but it makes Two Tail Fox viable in competing with the other big boys in overall damage output. I'm going to be biased here and put it into S tier, since I would not recommend anyone use Two Tailed without the catalyst. And by nature, all the catalysts in S tier are mandatory for using these guns. I would say it does fit the bill. Bergloss Curve grants Catalyst Shipper Quiver, which decreases draw time after freezing or slowing the opponent with this weapon. The buff is negligible. You can, you can kind of see it. It's going to be C tier. If Excalibur doesn't have a Catalyst, there I said it. I do not count it as having one, but Bungie certainly does. You have to choose between Grave Robber, Feedback Refit, and the only good one in my opinion, Immovable Refit. Just choose Immovable Refit. It basically gives double Glaive energy whenever you're standing still while shooting and blocking. It's not very good. It's going to be C tier. Vex Smith of Glass Catalyst grants bonus damage, accuracy, and stability for a short duration while firing full auto. The damage bonus is equivalent to Rampage. Overall, this is a phenomenal catalyst, and I'm going to put it in S tier since this takes Vex to another level. Vigilant Swing Catalyst grants Ensemble and provides bonus stats when near allies. This is a good catalyst because Vigilant Swing is a better gun when standing near allies. However, the bonus from Ensemble is still not the best in the world because Ensemble is a bad perk. However, because of the playstyle competing nature of Ensemble of the catalysts, I'm going to have to put in the B tier. Work of Coil Catalyst has one singular function, improves tracking on projectiles. This is a B tier perk, there's no way to quantify this without internal bungee data, it just feels better but you're still gonna miss occasionally just less than without it. B tier. Whisper the Worm Catalyst grants Whispered Breathing, also adds plus 30 to reload speed, taking it from 3.3 to 2.7. Whispered Breathing acts a lot like Box Breathing, except it doesn't expire after one shot. It's an A tier catalyst, despite Whisper not being the best gun in the game, this is pretty much mandatory to using it, it just makes the gun way better with the catalyst. Wicked Implement Catalyst grants two perks. 1. Headstone. Makes enough sense considering the playstyle of the gun being stasis and everything, and the unique perk, I don't know how to pronounce this, Hadalpagic Tribute, which gradually overfills the magazine while collecting stasis shards up to double the original capacity. It's a perfectly serviceable catalyst, but it doesn't break it into A tier, making me have to rank it into B tier. You can be forgiven for not having done this one, considering tier 7 deep dives are a little bit annoying to get to. Wishkeeper has four of catalysts, and these do more than other craftable exotic catalysts. Of the four catalysts, two of them are actually useful as it complements the intended purpose of Wishender. Multi-threaded snare refit and enduring snare refer to both good in their own right, but you could also use Vorpal Weapon or Hatchling as a catalyst. These options make the catalyst solid B tier. I would say the best is the multi-threaded snare refit, but it's really up to personal playstyle. It's going to be B tier. Sometimes something so simple enables gun to reach its peak and ascend to an entirely new level. With the Horde Catalyst grants plus 40 handling and auto loading holster, the devs were sending us a clear message. Shoot this gun and then swap away. It's so simple and so special. It is an S tier catalyst, simple as it is almost unusable without it. I can't even imagine a world where with the Horde doesn't have auto loading holster. It's just that good. It benefits the playstyle perfectly and it is one of the better catalysts in the game, even though it is so simple. World Line Zero has a very anticlimactic catalyst. It simply reads, reduces the activation time for Tesseract, the exotic perk that allows for the teleportation when you heavy attack. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I do not like this one. However, I'm still going to rank it C tier because it isn't so bad and you can measure how much better it makes World Line Zero. I don't rate it because I lost the pre-catalyst footage, so I wasn't able to actually measure it, but hey... This is just the way it is sometimes. You're one catalyst. Once you get it, even if you re-get it from collections, you can't remove it ever. 
Dead Man Tail's catalyst used to be broken, now not so much. Currently, it gives a faster rate of fire while getting headshots and aiming from the hip. ADS speed and hip fire spread are the same until you start getting headshots. Also grants bonus precision damage while hip firing. To put it short, if you can master hip firing, this gun is one of the craziest catalysts the entire time, rewarding player skill with gunplay to the highest it has ever been. This is an example of an S tier catalyst, since without it, DMT is in the whelming category, but with it, the catalyst turns into the over overwhelming category. Cloud Strike's Catalyst does two things. For starters, it grants plus 25 handling. This buff alone from the Catalyst turned Cloud Strike into a monster in the Crucible and everywhere else, basically making it from borderline clunky and unusable to one of the best snipers in endgame PvP. Also, it grants Triple Tap, which synergizes really well with Divinity and, you know, if you can just get a whole bunch of headshots in Crucible, get more extra ammo, but the handling alone makes this Catalyst an S tier just because what it does. Trespassers Catalyst adds Tunnel Vision as an extra perk. I do not rate Tunnel Vision. I think Tunnel Vision is one of the most useless perks in the entire game. And because of that, I'm going to be rating Trespasser in the D tier. All right, so at the end of the day, here's my final tier list. Every exotic Catalyst in the game ranked 90 in total. A couple things to note here that are Revision Zero and Osteo Striga don't have Catalyst icons in the database, despite how hard I looked for them. I just could not find them to save my life. Along with that in my ranking, I noticed that the best weapons in the game currently make up A and S tier. Coincidence? Maybe not. That's just to say that their catalysts are designed incredibly well and the guns just so happen to be strong. There are a few examples of guns being strong because of their catalysts. See Wither Horde and Navigator per se, but there are some subpar guns up there with incredibly well designed catalysts but aren't in a good place in the meta as a stance. See Huckleberry and Prospector in A tier, for example. During my time making this video, I took the time to play with every single exotic weapon with and without its catalyst, even the two I don't own, Navigator and Barry Bloodline. I put a lot of thought into these rankings, so please, if you agree or disagree, let me know why in the comments, make your own arguments, debate with each other. I'm trying to inspire a conversation here. Apart from that, I want to thank each and every single one of you who watched this video, even those of you who simply skipped to the end to see where their favorite exotics ranked. And remember, like, subscribe, share, and thanks for watching. See you next time.